Hey, what's going on guys? It's Justin and I want to talk to you today about the Nearshore Depth Highway. During the summer months, big kingfish, tarpon, and even in some parts of South Florida, big blackfin tuna and sailfish move their way into just a couple of miles off the beach and they're really accessible out of a small bay boat or even a kayak in my case. And during the summer months, these big fish move in following bait school migrations as they head up the beach on the Atlantic and over on the Gulf side. These pelagics move in really, really shallow and follow temperature breaks and color changes and in the situation we're gonna talk about today, depth contours and these depth highways. Most of the time, fish orient themselves to structure, like a natural reef line or a wreck or even just a pile of rubble. But sometimes you could be fishing an area that doesn't have any of these things and you need to look for different signs to be successful and maximize your efforts and stay in that strike zone. And that's what we're gonna talk about today in this next clip, check it out. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is really simple. Just head on over to Google and type in GPS nautical charts, okay? And the first link that you're gonna see here is iBoating, this free marine navigation charts and fishing map. Uh, I'm not always sure why it drops me over in California, but if you zoom out on this map, you're gonna see, ta-da, here's the map of the US. And just for the sake of example, we're gonna pull up an area that's in my backyard. I live over in Orlando, Florida. So when I do decide to head out and do some near shore fishing for kingfish and tarpon, one of the closest fisheries to me is over near Cocoa Beach and Cape Canaveral area. And uh, the locals and residents of Brevard County will always say that for miles and miles and miles out here in Brevard County, it is a desert wasteland. Uh, there is a natural reef line that runs 65 to 75 feet of water called the Brevard Reef Line. It's decent, but in terms of natural structure within a couple of miles of land, it is relatively barren. It is 30 to 50 feet of sand. And it can be difficult to find kingfish and tarpon, really any migratory nearshore species, because they're not orienting themselves to any particular structure, unlike down here in South Florida, where you make it down to uh, Pompano Beach area, Miami Beach, and within two miles of land, you're in 300 feet of water, there's coral, there's reef lines, there's wrecks all out here, and just within a couple miles, there's a lot of different options. But for the majority of people on the Atlantic side and the Gulf side, it's relatively shallow for a couple miles off of the beach. So I felt like Brevard County was a good example to highlight this style of fishing. So what we're trying to find right now are these depth highways, if you will. And I'm just gonna zoom in uh, in the Cocoa Beach area, and you're gonna notice these different colorations of the depth contours off of uh, Brevard County. Now, in real tight to the beach, obviously it's only a couple of feet, four, five, six feet. You've got this darker blue line, and it looks like it's running an average of about 11 feet real tight to the shoreline. You know, there's a couple sandbars and you're gonna have your shore wash. It's gonna muddy things up and get real silty and sandy and tight. And then you're gonna have a lighter blue area, probably between about 10 to maybe 30 feet deep. And then for several miles, it's gonna be nothing but 30 feet out to about 60 feet. And maybe this could be the Brevard Reef Line or a little bit deeper. If I take my map, uh, my, uh, my, my tool to see the distance, between land and these different areas, when you get to this 30 foot range, all the way out till about, let's say even 55, 60 feet of water, that's two, two and a half miles of gradual slope. And as I've mentioned before, this is all just sand. There's no real structure out here. Unless you find a bait school congregated here or here or here, and potentially find predators behind that bait school, this is all no man's land and you'll be wasting a lot of time just poking around or trolling a live bait back behind your boat uh, waiting for a random kingfish. Sure, you might find random bait schools, but this is not the first thing that I would look to do to maximize my efforts. Instead, if we take this measuring tool and we go in real shallow and I zoom in, you'll notice that from only you know, right against the shoreline out to about 30 feet in half of a nautical mile, there's a 30 foot drop and there's substantial drops even from 10 feet out to 30 feet. That's 0.33 nautical miles. You have a 20 foot drop in such a short 
area. And that's really where I would want to maximize my efforts because a lot of times these bait fish are going to be really tight to the shoreline. They're going to be right behind the breakers on the backside, big mullet, pogies or menhaden threadfin are going to run along this backside of these breakers and most of the time the tarpon are going to cruise in the kingfish are going to cruise in and they're going to be oriented to the bait fish real tight to the shoreline but if they're not what i want to stress to you guys is you can zoom in and use this map and find these contours these depth contours that these fish are likely going to zigzag on and that is what i recommend you guys do as well Get yourself some bait that's tight to the beach. Whatever bait fish is available, mullet or threadfin or pogies are usually the three main ones. You can sabiki up some croakers as well and use those. And I would just slowly troll one to one and a half knots, very slowly, zigzagging from where you find that bait fish out to about 30 feet in this section, every area is going to be a little bit different. These depth contours are going to change based on where you're fishing. But if you bounce back and forth, heading north with some of the current, you're likely going to get some knockdowns. You're likely going to isolate the areas that these kingfish and tarpon are going to be in. And then you're going to want to stay within about 5 to 10 feet of that area that you got that you're knocked down. That's going to be the most efficient way to dissect these near shore contour depth highways. So guys, always remember, find a combination of bait fish schools if you're able to, and use these contour depth highways that we talked about in this clip, and you will maximize your efforts and make sure that you're presenting that bait in the feeding zones that a lot of these migratory pelagic species are going to be. Guys, I hope you found this tip helpful. If you have any questions, reach out to us at saltstrong.com. We'd be more than happy to help you answer any of your questions. And we always encourage you guys, come on over and join us in our Insider Club. We are the best fishing club in America because we literally guarantee that you're going to start catching more fish while saving time and money. And we do this by providing you with our premium education, an exclusive insider fishing community, and huge discounts on the best tackle for saltwater anglers. So head on over to saltstrong.com and we will see you in the insider club soon.